And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. A relatively short week on account of our observance of Memorial Day, and I hope that everyone had a good Memorial Day weekend leading up to our observance of Memorial Day. Had a chance to go to the Indy 500, where once again, the old geezers prevail. Helio Castroneves took his fourth Indy title, putting him in some pretty rarefied air. If you got a chance to watch the race, just the last 10 laps were epic as he dog fought with Pelio and ultimately on the last two laps prevailed. Joining folks like Tom Brady, Phil Mickelson, the retirement of Adam Vinatieri, the old guys are winning all over the place. So are the Brazilians. One other sports note, last week I forgot something very important and shame on me. Jay Wright, the coach of the Villanova Wildcats, elected and soon to be inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. So richly deserved. I mean, I don't think they often give those honors to active coaches, but Jay Wright with two recent national championships and a spate of winning seasons deserves it so richly because not only is he a great X and O basketball coach, he is a great maker of men and a truly great man himself. A credit not only to Villanova University, but to the game of basketball. Congratulations, Coach Wright. Not only the best dress coach in America, but the best coach, period. And two quick political notes. One, once again, the eyes of the nation focus on, and particularly the media does, a state that's trying to do something to tighten up election rules and make it easier to vote, but harder to cheat. And so Texas has come under an onslaught from the left, almost all of it fictitious in terms of the charges. They're constantly propping up these straw man or straw person arguments and then attempting to defeat them. But what Texas did actually was to give more voting opportunities to Texans, far more than exist in Joe Biden's home state of Delaware. And as we're taping this a little bit earlier this week, the Dr. Fauci email scandal is breaking. Now, we don't have all the facts in front of us yet, but this is one that we clearly have to stay on top of. There needs to be a full investigation into the Fauci emails, and this can't be the end. This has to only be the beginning of looking into what really happened. Most importantly today, we observe the anniversary of the D-Day invasions, the battles that won the war ultimately and saved the world from the potential of Nazi domination. And it's my habit to read a portion from the message from the American commander at Omaha Beach, Major General L.T. Giroux, yes, one of my kin, because his words so succinctly summarize what our troops did for us and for the world on those days. You have been selected by the Supreme Allied Commander to perform the most important military operation in the history of the world. Your task will be to destroy the Nazi defenders at the gate of Western Europe and to lead our victorious forces on to Berlin. The way has been magnificently prepared for you. The Hun has been driven from the sea, annihilated by the Russians, kicked out of Africa, bombed from the air, and is now nervously and hopelessly awaiting for you to deliver the final knockout blow. You are well prepared to do this job. No troops have ever entered battle better trained or more magnificently equipped. Supporting you will be the tremendous resources of the Allied Naval and Air Forces. Our success is assured. With your victory will come the eternal gratitude of freedom-loving nations and people the world over. I have implicit confidence in your professional ability, your steadfast courage, and your unbridled determination. Hit hard and keep going forward. We fight on God's side and cannot fail. Major L.T. Giroux to the American troops on D-Day. And because of that, we've all had the best 60 seconds of our week.